Hi everyone and welcome to Scalp Micropigmentation Australia's Getting to Know Your Scalp Micropigmentation Artist segment. Um, the year is 2020 and we are currently in the COVID-19 restrictions so I thought I would take this opportunity to put together a series of videos um, where we interview our artists and today we have Maria from our Sydney location in Kalara um, and we'll be asking Maria some questions um, so that all of our lovely Sydney um, clients have the opportunity to meet um, and find out a little bit more about Maria. All right so Maria welcome. Hello how are you? Good. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, so let's start with the very first question, which is where did you first hear about scalp micropigmentation? Well, I first started um, hearing about it when I was doing some research for my husband. He was starting to experience some hair loss and we did look into hair transplants and we had taken um, some of the hair loss drugs for quite a while. We didn't see much improvement. Um, and yeah, when we, we did look into, you know, hair loss treatments, this sort of came up and I was really interested in it because I was already doing um, cosmetic tattooing. And yeah, that's sort of um, how I got started. I, I contacted you <laughs> yeah. um, because you were recommended as one of the best trainers in Australia. So um, yeah, that's how we sort of um, got into S and P, and it's been great for my husband. He's still, it's been a few years, and it's mm -hmm. still holding up really well. So um, yeah, we love it, and I f I feel like it all happened at the right time for mm -hmm. my husband and for myself. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you come from a beauty background. Just touch on that because your experience is. Um, way more than most for someone your age your um entry into the industry um you were quite young yes so i was 16 um uh, when i first started working for my sister um and i think i did my first beauty course when i was 18 and then i opened um a salon when i was 18 mm -hmm. and then yeah we opened multiple salons so at one point we we're running like seven at the same time and my sister or my sister-in-laws were all in the industry um, and I guess as time progressed they had children and they all sort of semi-retired they've all come back now and I've just sort of always stuck to it I, I love it and you know it's um, an industry that's always dynamic and, and growing and there's always so much to learn so every year I try and do a couple of courses mm -hmm. just to um, you know have industry currency and um, to keep up with any new trends or techniques or strategies um, and I really feel like that is you know like a benefit that I can bring to all my clients mm -hmm. yeah yep. excellent because um, you have done multiple trainings um, you've done trainings here in Australia and overseas so I think with your yes. business background and your um, advanced skills I think you make a really awesome um oh. artist to be a part of our team so thank you yeah no. oh i love being part of our team i i feel like our team you've been quite selective with um who's you know in your team and um it really i feel shows in the results that we can produce so it's an honor to be part of the team <laughs> Lovely. All right. So you've been in the industry um, a couple of years now. So what has been the biggest thing that you've seen change? Not so much here in Australia because we are a little bit further behind with how many artists we have here and how long scalp micropigmentation has been more mainstream out here. Um, watching the industry um, over the last couple of years, mainly from overseas, what do you feel has been the biggest um, advancement um, in our industry um i think some of the biggest advancements are um the specialized inks mm -hmm. and um this the specialized s p tattoo machines like um bishop coming out with yeah. such a great machine um that's you know specialized only for s p um so yeah i think it's more the tools that we use yeah we've got tools that 
you know, aren't just used for um, cosmetic tattooing. It's more specific to our industry. So, um, and just the needles, they keep improving. Um, yeah, I think machines, needles and inks. Yep. So we you know, stop experimenting with um, cosmetic inks that aren't really, you know, sort of designed for S&P. So I feel like the longevity of the inks and the machines that we use really um, fare well over the years now. Mm -hmm. So just watching people come back um, and the results are really still nice and natural and soft um, as opposed to I've seen some really old work and, you know, maybe that was what was available back then. Yeah. But um, the old work that comes in, you know, that was, was done by just tattoo artists, basically. Um, yeah, there's a there's a huge difference in how it wears. Yeah. Yes. And that would be um, previous to around 2015, we would say. So, um, yeah. 2016, perhaps, um, it was still a little bit experimental. Um, back at that time, there wasn't readily available training. Um, at that time, you really had to buy into a franchise and be taught from within the franchise business um, how to do scalp micropigmentation. So um, yeah. I, think I would agree there that um, anything sort of prior to around the 2015, those results um, are fairly different to what we now see. Um, awesome. So what is it that you love most about scalp micropigmentation? Um, I love the whole process and the fact that there is zero to, you know, minimal downtime. Um, and the results are, you know, gradually built up, but almost instantaneous. Um, so, yeah, like just watching someone, you know, come in from their consultation to their third session walking out, mm -hmm. they've got a full hairline and that's so exciting to see um yeah just restoring people's confidence and um yeah my favorite part is probably you know getting them in front of a mirror and and showing them um where the hairline is now mm -hmm. so yeah just you know if i look at people's faces when they come in for the consultation they're quite nervous um and then compare it to sort of the last session it's amazing and it's life changing, you know, mm -hmm. when we, we can help people in such a big way um, and it changes people's confidence. Like I've had guys who, you know, were never photographed without a hat or, um, you know, there were certain activities that they couldn't do or wouldn't do. And now they've just got so much freedom. And I think that's, you know, so rewarding. So, yeah, that's probably my favourite part, the transformation and um, just changing how people feel about themselves and being mm -hmm. able to help them get there. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you there. I think any scalp micropigmentation artist that might be watching this would probably relate um, really quite well to that because it is so yeah. interesting for sure. Um, so when a guy comes to a consultation and they walk through the door, is there something that you instantly see um, about that person that you think, oh, yes, I could, I could definitely help with that hairline? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, when someone comes in, I, um, you know, after talking to them for a while, I always look at their hairline and where we could take it, you know, and um, I, I always discuss realistic outcomes as well. Um, and you know, hairlines that actually suit the person and their age, um, I think makes such a difference, like in, in framing their face. And um, yeah, I, I think as soon as they come in, I can kind of start to, you know, my brain starts going and I can kind of start to visualise where I think we can end up. And it's always nice to actually go through with the process and see it all come together. So yeah, mm. and just... Yeah, I, I just know that I can help them. Yeah. Um, so what part of the scalp micropigmentation process would you say is your favourite? Is it, you know, working with that person in the first session um, with their hairline? Do they get excited? Or is it when it's all finished, what part's your favourite? 
Uh, to be honest, my the second session is probably my favourite. Yeah. <laughs> Just because I feel like that's when you start to see the fullness come back and the density come back. Uh -huh. um, yeah, second session, I feel like people will walk out with a different kind of swagger. Yeah. You know, they're, they're a lot more confident. Um, and, yeah, that's, that's probably my favourite session. I call it the magic session because yeah. you just you, you look like a different person when you walk out of the second session. And third session, also one of my favourites. But second session, I think that's when you start to see the twinkle come back in their eyes. And, yeah, yeah it's exciting for them and for myself as well. Yeah. Brilliant. Um, so where do you see our industry heading? Do you feel like there's a certain direction that we're going in at the moment? Where do you see the scalp micropigmentation industry heading in the next couple of years? Certainly, I think that, you know, we're going to cross borders a lot more um, with in terms of training and networking and connecting with people. Um, you know, I've done like a few webinars with some s p artists overseas um and just learning from each other and and building a bigger network i feel like particularly in australia um there's you know less artists but as more artists come on board and um start treating i think yeah there will be more of a push towards um having sort of an international stage where all s p artists can learn off each other and um, support each other mm -hmm. yeah I think there's more push overseas and overseas training and yeah, yeah. It, I think it'll be really good for the industry and um, for our clients because you know the more you learn um, the more you can bring value to your client yeah absolutely so Sydney tends to be one of the um, oldest parts for having scalp micropigmentation um, it's where some of the original companies have come from. Do you feel like you see a lot more sort of poor work coming through? Because back when it was sort of starting, there was some really nice controlled results. Do you feel like there is a lot more poor work coming through the Sydney location in the last six months? Yeah, so there is it's great that the industry is getting bigger and um, some people are getting the proper training, you know, to do S and P. Um, but we do also have a lot of cosmetic tattoo artists or body art artists um, just sort of experimenting. And I think that's quite dangerous. So yeah, we, I have done quite a few um, repair, repair jobs um, because yeah, there are people out there that, you know, there's no integrity behind their work. They just think, well, I've been doing, you know, cosmetic tattooing or body mm -hmm. art tattooing for so long that I can probably do this. And I think what people don't realise is that s and is quite a refined style of tattooing. So um, you do need the proper training. And, um, yeah, it, it's quite dangerous to be messing with someone's head. Yeah. Um, without proper training and experience too so you know just doing you know an online course or whatever is not going to cut it mm -hmm. yeah so I, I think yeah that's that's kind of the problem we're seeing coming through at the moment in the last six months or so yeah that, there are a lot more S&P artists um I guess coming into the industry but there's not enough proper training yeah, yeah. um and with your consultations, like, um, you do tend to have a very big portfolio there um, in Sydney. So anyone wanting to come through for consultation with Maria, um, it's really important to not only show Maria what it is that you're hoping to achieve maybe by showing her some photos of results that you may have seen online, but making sure that your artist can show you that she can do that style of tattooing. Um, because there is such a big difference in all the hairlines that we create and every hairline is quite unique um, to every client. So when you're doing your research, make sure that you do um, see proof that your um, artist is able to do the style of scalp micropigmentation that you are after. Um, 
So one more question for you, Maria. Um, is there one standout transformation that you've completed that has been your absolute favourite? Is there a story that you can tell us about one of your clients? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought there may be. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> We almost got through. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, I was like holding it in. Okay. <clears throat> Is it gone? Yeah, so one of my um okay, wait. I'll sorry. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Do you want me to ask the question again? Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. that would be good. <clears throat> So last question, Maria, um, is there one standout transformation that you've completed that has been your absolute favourite? Is there a story that you can tell us about one of your clients? Oh, yeah. So um, actually, it's been a few months now, but I recently completed um, a, a client with um, alopecia. Mm -hmm. um, his alopecia hadn't progressed in the last probably 20 years but there were significant um, losses, you know, all around the back and also at the top. Um, he was very, very nervous. And he came in and, you know, he said he, he wasn't able to leave the house, that it's gotten so bad. Um, and I convinced him to maybe clip it down and we'll have a look at it. And he, he said it was the first time he's had someone cut his hair in 30 years. Wow. So he'd just been cutting it himself and using fibres um, um, to, to cover up the hair loss. So, yeah, we clipped him in the clinic um, and he's now able to walk outside and feel confident. Um, he's going to change his career path. He said, you know, he, he wants to get into acting. Wow. And... Um, it's just yeah like we cried a little bit he cried I cried so yeah it's it's it was such a beautiful transformation and not only just physically but just mentally for him um it just gave him a new lease on life um and he was a young guy he was about 40 years old mm -hmm. um and I said you know this is an amazing um, journey for, for you to take. So, yeah, he said this is his year and um, that's probably one of my favourite transformations just because of the lifestyle he was living before where he was, it was a bit of a, um, you know, homebody mm -hmm. um, and he didn't feel confident enough to sort of get out and meet people and he said he's going to start using the dating apps again. So yeah, I think that's that was really exciting. Yeah, yeah just to see, yeah. yeah, how far he'd come and um his confidence levels and um he was so nervous in the consultation. Um, but yeah, every time we walked out, he had you know some new goals to put on his list. So yeah, yeah that was very exciting. That's amazing. Well done. Yeah. Lovely. All right. Well, it was lovely chatting with you today. Um, so thank you so much for joining us and, and putting this little um, YouTube and, and podcast together for us so that people can get to know you a little bit better. Um, so if you're living in Sydney and looking into hair loss treatments and solutions, um, Maria is in Kalara location, um, but she does see people from all over Sydney um, make the trip to see her um, for her amazing results. So if you're looking into scalp micropigmentation, we offer a free consultation um, where you can meet Maria in person. She can map out some um, hairline or maybe look at, um, you know, for the ladies doing some density work um, to make the hair feel thicker and fuller. If you're interested in this style of cosmetic tattooing, make sure you be in touch with us. Um, please subscribe to our channel below as well and hit the like button. Um, and if you're in the podcast channel, make sure you please give us a, a lovely rating to help um, spread the word about scalp micropigmentation um, and what we're doing for all of those um, affected by hair loss here in Australia. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. See you later.